Hello, hello, welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy XI. Um, so I tried to get the pollen in between episodes, but I got kind of impatient because the drop rate's low. And I realized there's another notorious monster in Constantine Highlands that we can take on now. And it's this little thing right here, Gilly Doo. Or Jilly Doo, or Gilly Doo, or however it's said. That's some sort of. It sounds Irish. I don't really know though. It drops. It could possibly drop a great sword, uh, and it's on a time spawn, so it just spawns every hour, more or less. Um, about level 17 or something. The trusts are gonna make short work of it. Uh, trusts make short work of pretty much everything in the base game. Ah, uh, oh, no great sword. That's okay, because we can come back every hour if we want to. Uh, it's like a level 15 great sword, usable by all the jobs that can use great swords, which are the warrior, the paladin, the dark knight, and the rune fencer. But oh well. So, uh, our objective is the same pretty much as last time. I didn't go back to the dunes, I didn't really do anything else uh, since last time. I just... I killed like 20 bees and I didn't get any more clumps of pollen. So the other day when we got clumps of pollen, um, we were pretty lucky. So yeah. Uh, so we still need to go get the magic skull to the old guy and we still need a crab apron. Um, also, uh, upon watching my other episodes, I realized that even with the um, the music turned down and the sound effects turned down. Um, they still drown me out a little bit, so I'm gonna turn them down a little bit more. I don't want to turn them down too far though, because some of the some of the music tracks during like cutscenes and stuff are gonna be sort of laid back or or a little subtle, you know. Um, so yeah, but yeah, well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. If you've got any opinions on how loud the music is, or how loud the sound effects are compared to my voice, or just in general, like if, if you think the music should be louder, or if you think the, um, the, um, come on brain, work with me here, the sound effects should be louder, just, just let me know, because uh, I, I can always change it up, I can always do other things. I can even try using my other mic, although I kind of loathe to because it picks up a lot more sound and I don't really have a quiet place. I don't have like a, a studio or a recording booth or anything like that. I'm just in my my room and uh, other people live here so and there's lots of outside noise and my dogs bark occasionally and, you know, all this other stuff. Yeah we'll just uh We'll just run on up to uh, Valcrum Dunes again, and uh, while our Gubu sort of jumps and bounces behind us, we'll kill wasps on the way, but we like won't go out of our way. Like if, if a wasp like directly crosses the line of sight, I'll kill it, see if it can give us pollen, and if it can't, then oh well. But our main objective for this video is to get the sub job. And once I have the sub job, I'm going to go back to Bastok and start working on the other jobs. Um, and why I will show that on screen is because I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and level Red Mage next uh, up a little bit, just to show you some you know how the, the magic in the game works on a very basic level. Um, and also because Red Mage is fun and it'll let me buy a sword and. Uh, All that jazz. There's actually not like a bona fide reason. Like there's no there's no need to level multiple jobs actually. Like you can because of trust you can actually get lots of stuff done without even without even picking up sub jobs. But I mean this is the kind of game where if you can get an increase your power, character strength, at all, then you want to. 
because um, the game fully expects you, like, training wheels are off, like, the second you get out the gate. Uh, that's, like, why the first thing the game told you was, like, oh, hey, you know, uh, stuff will kill you out there, so pick your battles, choose wisely. And uh, this monster up here, it's not a notorious monster, but it's actually a rare um, ram-type monster that... Uh, there's there's a monster that spawns off of it. I went ahead and looked it up. For the purple belt, there's actually two different uh, ram-type notorious monsters. A couple of them are in the level 50s, but the lower level versions are in the, the high level 20s, which we could easily kill with trusts now. And I think these trimmer rams are like level 24 or something. Just boost up, and then we wait like 10 seconds. The trust don't kill it first. I'm not sure I like new boost, really at all. Great fleet. HP down? Oh dear, look at that. That's awful. Glad we countered. Cut our HP by 75%. Uh, that's not, like, that's not even a notorious monster. It's just a ram. Like, all rams can do that. You'll notice that uh, this wide scan we've got, it actually, like, it'll keep... It'll say the monster's there until the body actually despawns. Also, fun fact, I probably mentioned it before, but not every job used to have wide scan. It used to only be Beastmasters and Rangers. But because it's such a useful feature, a lot of third-party tools for, like, window or and stuff went ahead and added it to people's abilities. So almost everyone had it because almost everyone who plays this game uses windowware. It's just like one of those things where like, it's, it's not a parser or anything, but you know, it's just like, it had so many quality of life things that people were just like, yeah, this game is unplayable without windower. So like, they use it. I've never used it, so whatever. But the reason I have wide scan is because they added it to the game for every job. Like it's just a natural part of the map function now. Which still kind of weirds me out a little bit. I mean, it's extremely useful. But, uh, yeah. The only thing that Beastmaster and Ranger get in regards to it now is they get a greater range on how many monsters they can see on the wide scan. Now, we're level 21, so we're not, like, invulnerable or anything around here. But I don't think any of the lower level goblins are going to aggro us on the way to Selbina. I could be wrong. Oh, and we probably want to resummon our trusts. Sometimes despawn if if the uh, recast time on your trusts, if it's up, like you see it's like four or like three and a half minutes or whatever. Uh, if it's up and like they're low on HP or MP and you're not in battle, you can always despawn them and resummon them and they come back at full strength. Uh, and that can be quicker than waiting for them to regenerate, depending on what has transpired. It's also kind of funny to me, after all these years, I still am scared by those goblins a bit. What do you say, bats? Easy prey. Are you easy prey that aggro's though? Once you get a certain level above monsters, uh, even aggressive monsters, 
they will no longer aggro you. Um, unless like they're a linking monster and you're already fighting one of them. Earth Elemental. Incredibly tough. Woo! And we're level 21 now. Because of all the EXP we got from uh, getting that magic skull. Yeah. Yep, even match. Wow, level 21 sheep. How about that? It's earth weather, sandstorm, or whatever. Okay, snippers. Hot Gene is dedicated to getting me to back to full HP. Goblin Mugger, you should you shouldn't mess with the best. This is a thief, and all thief type monsters have an innate evasion bonus as a trait. Uh, thief players do as well. Thieves have the highest evasion in the game. Juice, huh? I don't need that. What I need is to fight more crabs and have them give me a crab apron. Okay, uh, you could just kill kill them in a single go of it then. I wonder why yesterday I couldn't, like, retarget that quickly after I'd boosted. Maybe it's because I boosted in combat. Maybe they really don't want you to be able to boost outside of combat for some reason. Oh, just more rock salt. This kind of also used to be an EXP camp, like right in that little nook. Like your mages would set up like right here and the melee would like stand down here. And your puller could pull the snippers that were basically right here and extend it around the corner and around the other corner. Although the ones that are around the left corner are w kind of far away. And then you could also grab goblins. Although crabs were preferred because goblins explode. Unless your party was like okay with goblins exploding. Crab apron, there it is. Excellent. The soft abdominal shell, Volen crab. All right, so we're gonna be able to go get our sub job. Yeah, we might as well fight things on the way there, because why not? Like, trusts are so strong, it's just ridiculous. And we might as well get to uh, level 22 if, if we run into enough stuff, so. There's nothing sp spectacular about level 22, it's just like, well, why, why ignore the monsters if you can just kill them quickly?
Leeches aren't a good target, though. They do something called Acid Mist, and it's very... Um, not deadly, but it lowers your attack power by like 30% or something. And it's AoE, too. So, like, it hits everyone in your party. Well, they told that goblin what they... What they thought. We're poisoned and bioed. Bio uh, ticks your HP down and lowers your physical attack power. It's pretty bad stuff. Oh, it's Butcher's only decent challenge? Okay. Take it. Naji's getting his ass beat. Better him than me, though. The one trick about trust parties is that uh, if the player character dies, then all the trust despawn. So, uh, you know, user beware. First digit's odd, so let's try 39. It's greater than 39, so we'll try 79 next. Or actually, we'll try 71. Less than 71. Okay, but greater than 39. So it's either got to be in the 50s, or it's got to be like 70 exactly. Let's try 59. Less than 59, okay. So... Uh, I guess we'll try 54. Less than 54. Mm. 50. Ah, are you serious? Well, whatever. That happens so much. And the poison we got on us is lasting a long time. All right, time for music again. So, not all the overworld areas have music, and quite a few of them are silent, but a lot of them do have music. But it's mostly the towns. I love the Selbina theme. I'm guessing they put some sort of in-game, like, uh, sort of thing here, because seeing a lot of, you know, people here. Alright, bro, give me my sub-job.
could probably get that introductory letter for turning in the bee pollen, but I don't really care about that right now. Quest completed noise. We'll be hearing it more, although, well, not like so frequently that it's. But yes, now we want to go back to Bastok. I don't really want to pay the teleportation fee, so because we're like we're still hurting for for Gil, you know, like we still need Gil. So I'm just gonna go out here and fight things until they kill me without trusts. I could do it with trusts, but that would take it longer for me to die. Because Ruha Jean would. I mean, I guess I don't have to use Ruha Jean, but either way, they. We'd be killing things faster, so uh, I'd still be dying slower. It's a tried and true method known as the blood warp. Goblin might be able to kill me just by himself. I suppose we can try to make it interesting. But if he doesn't succeed, the next monster will. He's getting a lot of crits on me. I'd say that's right. He was he was an even match. I don't want to give any goblins the pleasure, so I'm gonna get this sheep to kill me. Kill me, sheep. I believe in you. There you go. Now will we get another surprise cutscene for zoning back into Bastok? We did not. Which is good. Good, good. Okay, there's several things we want to do here. Uh, we want to... Is it Cleades that I speak to it about? Yes, high missions. 
Yeah, give me missions. Go to Zeroon Mines in the western section of the Mines District. Okay, sure thing. Uh, you know how we have like a rank, right? Well, you can raise your rank by doing missions. Uh, I don't remember who tells you that the gate guards will give you missions, but gate guards give you missions. Uh, not the ones that cast Signet on you, though. The other ones. So, yeah. Uh, also, we can go and check on the auction house. Probably put these earth crystals up for sale. See if our other crystals sold. It would be nice if they did. Hey, look, they all sold. If they didn't, their text would be green. And, uh... I don't know if they changed the amount of numbers you can put on the auction house, but normally you can only put, like, I think seven items on the auction house per character or something. Huh, I don't know what those are. Oh. Excuse me, all my yawning. Oh. Now that I've turned the air conditioning on and the music down, I can barely hear the town music. <laughs> uh. Special locks? You must wait another 44 days to perform that action. Okay, I guess that's like... You can't just make a new character and get stuff. It's a goblin special tally or special dial or whatever. You can get like any item in the game from it. So like sometimes he'll hand you like a item level 119 weapon that only comes out of like some special boss. Oh, oh yeah, you told me about that before, didn't you? Precious Mithra Cubs. Okay. I guess that's like a quest. Got like Moogle quests now. But to get your money from the auction house, uh, you have to pull it out of your delivery box. So like, yeah. Look at that. We're not hurting as much for uh, things now. Uh, do I actually have access to that, though? It's like, it's there, but I can't put anything in it. Same thing with the Mog wardrobes. Huh. I wonder why it shows me that I can, like... I know you have to pay for three and four, from what I've heard. Like, you have to pay for these. I think it's two two dollars per wardrobe, um, but man, I guess maybe we don't have access to it even one or two yet though. Cause uh, yeah. Okay, so we unlocked our sub job. Wait, what? What do you? What's the cutscene that's going on? What? It began with a raindrop, or so the legend says. Most renowned handy moogle in the entire nation, huh? <laughs> Why, it's a miracle. This tottering, tumble-down shanty. I mean, this beautiful abo boat of yours is still standing, Master.
Orcish plate armor, quad of backscale, and a block of Yagudo Kulk. Uh, okay. That's like a quest to expand our mog safe, I think. Um, or something like that. But yeah, so... Now that we've got sub-jobs, though, let's go ahead and change over to Red Mage. And we'll make our support job Monk, just because... Remember what the guy said? He said that if your sub-job's under-leveled, right? So, like... We won't always be sub monk on Red Mage, but yeah. And if you kind of remember from yesterday, um, the stats on Red Mage for starting out were not this high. Having a sub job instantly boosts your stats. And you also get the combat skills uh, relevant to the level of your sub job. Um, but they only go as high as what your sub job has them in. And Red Mage doesn't actually have any innate hand-to-hand -hand skill that I'm aware of. Um, nor staff skill. But, yeah, everything else there is pretty okay. And we'll grab our tunic. And our browning boots. We'll grab everything out of there and put, put the stuff that we can't use yet back... I mean, we can't use any of this except for the human clothes, but put the other stuff away for now to save space in our little limited inventory. Okay. Notice our HP is quite a bit higher at level 1 because we have a sub job than it would otherwise be as well. And we've got the martial arts job trait, which isn't going to help us. <laughs> uh, I mean, we could go punch stuff because we have level 6 hand to hand, and I think because of having monk sub job, we have access to combo. Because uh, you'll you'll get access, ex with a few exceptions, you'll get access to your sub-job's weapon skills if you have the requisite actual, like, combat skill. But, um, sometimes it doesn't actually give you the weapon skills. So what we want, because we're a mage now, uh, we'll get stone at level 4, red mage, so that's kind of nice. Uh, we want to grab, I guess, uh, let's see, we want Dia, because that's our first spell as a red mage. We want Cure, we want Protect, we won't worry about buying, buying uh, Shell for now, I like enough scrolls. It's the only spell we'll be able to learn right off the bat is Dia. Lowers an enemy's defense and gradually deals light element damage. This actually tells us what the spells do. They didn't used to, I don't think. They just had the jobs listed and a... Well, maybe they did. I don't know. It's been so long. But yeah, Dia is one of my favorite spells in the game. Uh, it counts as enfeebling magic. And that's actually Red Mage's specialty. They specialize in enfeebling their opponents. And enfeebling magic is extraordinarily powerful uh, when applied correctly. Uh, you can completely neuter so many bosses in the game with Red Mage's uh, debuffs. Like, for a long time at the level 75 cap, they had slow or slow two. And you could basically slow a boss monster's attack rate down so much that it would never get through uh, the other barriers that people used to block attacks with, like the spell used to Simi or uh, Blink.
And every time I've seen these cool Galkas, I kind of want to be a Galka. But then I remember that I'd be so wildly disproportionate that I don't want to be a Galka. And I, I guess we could have bought a sword in the mines there, but I think there's another shop for us to buy weapons at here that also will sell swords. And I think we'll also sell axes. I could be wrong. It's been a while. If not, we'll just make a return trip to the markets or something. Fishing rod, rogue, headgear, that's like light armor for mages and lightweight fighters, pickaxe, eye drops, crossbow bolts, thieves tools, living key. Hmm. Wow, they really did turn this place into a knick-knack shop. I could have sworn this place used to sell chainmail and axes and swords. Huh. Maybe I've remembered wrong. I suppose I remembered wrong. Oh wait, no, maybe it's the uh, other building. Maybe it's not Boyd's Knickknacks. Maybe it's, uh... Yeah, okay. Degas' armor. I'm, I'm just stupid, that's it. Of course, that just says armor, so... Huh. Well, he sells all the way up to chainmail. And it's a travesty that Red Mage can't use it, since they can use it in their original appearance, but whatever. Oh wait, we actually do want something there. We want the Lowen Shield, so we can start getting shield skill. Uh, when you have a shield, uh, your accuracy for your punch, if you were to try to, like, fight with hand-to-hand, -hand, you'd swing one punch, and it would still be based off your hand-to-hand -hand skill, but you wouldn't be able to, I don't think you can, I don't think you can use your, uh, your actual, um, what you call it, weapon skills, there we go. My brain will work one of these days. Dude, I am paranoid every time I zone now that I'm gonna get a cutscene I don't expect. Kind of interesting, they got like some music shops over there and stuff. Oh yeah, that reminds me. Um, for spells and things, uh, buying them isn't the only way to find scrolls. You can get them off of, um, off of monsters, and you can also get them off of... Uh, Quests. There we go. Brain, brain, brain will work one day. Oh look, they've got wands. Uh, we might as well pick up a wand because uh, we won't be using it right now on Red Mage, but on the other, on the other mages, it'll come in handy. Uh, here we can buy axes. And uh, ooh, and daggers. 
So we'll pick a dagger up. Oh, inventory's full. Uh, but we've got our mock case, so we'll be fine. Let's see. Let's put away uh, the maple wand for now. And the bee pollen, because we're not going to be able to get any of that from around here. Whatever. Okay. Sell me that dagger now, you jerk. Did did I? I didn't buy a a. Okay, I didn't buy an axe. I want to buy an axe for warrior. And also a great axe at some point, but that's not like pivotal right now. It is warrior's best weapon, and it's one of my favorite weapons in the game. But, uh, yeah, it's not, it's not something we need to concern ourselves with just yet. Need to go get some more action in so that, uh, you can be entertained. The main reason I'm doing this recording is just to show you that, hey, subjobs, this is how you set it, this is how it works. And it's really, it is the same as before. Um, go after these huge hornets. And we'll use our Dia spell. It costs 7 MP. And it lowered its defense and did 2 damage. And it's got the Dia dot on it now, so it's slowly taking damage as we fight with it. I might want to go ahead and put the dagger and the axe and yeah that'll do for now, it's whatever. Level 2, we got a full, a full MP restoral and HP restoral. Now, you see that guy over there? He's got, like, the Destrial Beret and this other thing on there. Um, they really help the leveling process. I actually went ahead and redeemed the codes for those. but And I put them on Calm Wind, but for some reason they didn't show up in his delivery box. I don't know exactly where I'm supposed to get them from. Um, so it would certainly be nice to have. But, oh well. Ooh, a rock lizard. Seems tough. Seems like it has high defense. High defense, you say? Well, I have just the thing for that. Oh, it still seems like it has high defense, even though Dia landed. Well, that's a shame. That's pretty much all we've got right now. Too low on level to uh, have anything else. I may have bitten off more than I can chew. That's okay though, we can just uh, get Ruha Jin out here real quick. Get Ruha Jin out. Oh, oh, you cannot use trust it's in the middle of battle. Okay, well then we're boned. We're boned! That'll teach me to not use my trusts. It's okay, though. You got the idea, right? And naturally, we would have more MP if we were subbing, like, White Mage or Black Mage. But... Like I said, like once we get up to like say level four, 
because black mage and white mage aren't level two, they won't actually go to level two. But Monk will. And let's go complete that mission that we signed up for earlier. I'm going to try to keep this episode down to an hour. Um, I'm very easily distracted, so like... I don't know if I'm really going to succeed at let's playing this game in an efficient manner at all. <laughs> but I'm enjoying myself and it's chill, so... We probably could have killed that lizard if we had sword level 5, so that we could have the first sword weapon skill, but we don't have sword level 5, so we didn't. Alas, alas. We'll get there. Combat skill and magic skill plays a huge role in actually succeeding in combat, especially against anything that's uh, remotely challenging. This is the Zarin Mines. Uh, I don't think... Yeah, they didn't give us a map of it. Which is a shame, but it's whatever. There's some monsters in here you can fight. And that's why that tome is back there. There's dingbats in here. Uh, yeah, we'll kill them. Why not? I'll look up why that Destrier Beret didn't appear in my stuff. Festive Moogle. Okay, so we gotta go see the Festive Moogle to get it. We can do that after we complete this mission. Um, pretty much... The Destrier Beret is pretty much given to anyone who buys the Collector's Edition version of the game, uh, which now is like super cheap. I think it's like 20 bucks or 30 bucks or whatever it is uh, for basically every for Final Fantasy XI and every expansion that it has. So like, yeah, C Colliery Bat. Yikes. Uh, I'm glad those aren't aggressive. Hey, I'm looking for the Mining Forum Foreman. Have you seen him? Well, you should slap her on the ass and give her a good fucking. Maybe he he actually secretly likes being bossed around, though. I think these colliery bats and burrower worms are actually, like, in the level 70s or 80s or something. Because uh, they did a thing where they changed... Uh, monsters out in the overworld to provide a better leveling experience. But what was funny was they didn't really think about it when they did it. So, um, they wound up putting really high level monsters in a lot of low level places or overriding old low level camps that they judged that I guess people, they, they judged them such that people don't use them anymore. And, um, Really threw me for a loop. Uh, I'd squash the monsters for you, guy, but I can't. Like, they're way too high level for me. They all say incredibly tough, and uh, I am not going to fuck with that. Although, it could be funny. Now, that guy's actually got pants on. He's probably the foreman. My dad saw me play Final Fantasy XI once or twice, and his commentary, I was like running through a run through a cave like this, and his commentary was, I see that you're playing a game where you're on some impossible desert planet. And I was like, uh, okay.
Okay, so he's not the foreman. Maybe Makarim is the foreman? She looks like the guard that we talked to to get the mission. Oh, uh, I gotta give the Zarin report to Naji. Huh. Well, we know where Naji is already because of trust. The Galka, our main workforce, seem to suffer from low morale. As indicated by their recent insubordination, they seem to have found new hope in the return of their tail keeper, who disappeared 30 years ago. That seems like an oddly specific reference. Feels like it's more informative to me than it would be to Naji, but okay. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know how you'd become the president's bodyguard and not know about the Galka situation and stuff like that. But hey, you got you got to learn about a uh, games world somehow, right? What is that? Quad of Inquest? Okay, so that's probably for some quest or something. There's like so many new little like quest triggers and things that I don't even know what they do anymore. Um, and mining points apparently shine now? Okay. Well, I guess it's better than not knowing that they're there. Uh, and that's what they do in 14. I guess they took some pages out of their their far more successful MMO. And the one bad thing about this is they don't have a map. I don't actually remember how I came in here. So I just gotta like orient myself by sort of remembering the layout when I approached. It's really not that big of a cave system though, or, or mine shaft or whatever. Although it technically counts as a dungeon. Like the monsters in here have like an, I think like an eight to 12 minute respawn time or something like that. Maybe, maybe it's nine to 16. It's been a long time. I know some dungeon monsters have a respawn time of 16 minutes compared to overworld monsters who have like five minute respawn times. Kind of awkward. All of the uh, teleport crystals in this zone are actually like well, one's in the default position that the home point in this zone was always in, but the other two are like in places that are less convenient for new people and more convenient for old people. Oh, I got a bard over there. And their title is Ajito Marujito's Minder. Yeah, I wanna travel to the Metalworks. Uh, home point two, I guess. A little more convenient, because we're coming up on an hour. And I'd like to keep this one shorter than the last one I uploaded. Maybe I should have went with home point one. Make it? No, I didn't make it. Ugh, these elevators. Maybe home point one would have been faster than riding the elevator, though. I don't know. I'm I am not wise to the current 
state of uh, being able to like teleport everywhere or whatever. So, meh. Craftsman's Eatery, huh? Can we buy like food here to help us out? Got yeah, plenty of people to talk to. Leonard, huh? You sell any food, buddy? Okay, d does Tomasa sell the food? She does. Iron bread, that sucks. Baked Popito, that also sucks. Although, actually, HP plus 20 wouldn't be that bad. Like, at level 1, think about it. Like, that would almost double... Well, not double, but like... That's like two or three more hits. Yeah, most, most everything else there isn't really, like, that great. There's some HP foods you can get later that give, like, 300 HP. Uh, although I think it's a percentage of your total HP as well or something. So, like... Yeah. Hey again, Naji. Galka Myth, huh? Well, you know, this is a world of magic, right? So myths can't really be that, you know, hard to, uh... Oh, he's gonna, he's chastising us for actually looking at the, the document. <laughs> he's got, he's got, he had dialogue for that. Okay, so we wanna, I guess, I, mean, I don't actually really want to teleport, but I'm gonna. Uh, markets. Let's see. Entrance, auction house, and mock house. Okay, that makes sense. Because we did a mission, uh, we got progress on our little rank bar there. When the rank bar fills, uh, you can... Okay, so back to the metal workers, huh? Oh, Sid! How about that? Yeah, I'll accept a mission to talk to Sid, why not? See, this is the reason I like starting in Bastok, because it has a lot of Final Fantasy elements right off the bat. There's Leaping Lizzie uh, outside of the, the the place, and, you know, like, Sid. Right? There's Sid, there's an airship. There's good notorious monsters to give you good low-level gear. There's... Um, well, Sid. Oh, there's Galkas. Uh, there's also some black market dealings uh, with an organization called the Tenshodo, or like Far Eastern, or whatever. Okay, so we wanted this one and not the other one at the bottom of the elevator, because Sid's office is actually um, on the second floor here. It's just not as close to the president's office. Invincible shield, huh? Sid's lab. Sid. Dude, he's got some shoulders. Oh, God, look at those teeth. What, is he Andre of Astora?
Bring that thing of a jig over here. <laughs> Silent Mountain. Acidity tester to the Dangruff Wadi near South Gustaburg. Try to find a place in the Wadi where this blue acidity tester changes colors. Oh, I remember this one now. It's nothing dangerous. The Dangruff Wadi has some of the most dangerous monsters in the game now. Uh, it used to have monsters ranging from like level 10 to like level 30 depending on where you were but it's one of those places that I mentioned where they just like the Zeroon mines they put high level monsters in it and if I remember right the high level monsters they put in the Dangruff Wadi are like level 94 so like if they're aggressive and we got to go to a part where they're aggressive at we're kind of boned but we won't go there this time um, like go back outside real quick and see if we can get up to level four so I can learn a couple more spells and uh, you know start showing you some more magic and of course obviously I can just show you the magic next time as well but you know it'd be nice to show it to you this time I gotta admit, those teleports are really, really, really convenient. Also, you can't cast while moving, if that wasn't obvious. So if you ever want to cast in this game, you have to do it while standing still. And there's no slide casting like in 14. Um, yeah. I like how our parrying skill went up, even though we, we didn't parry anything. I believe that let us learn the cure spell. Or we can learn cure now, right? Yeah, red mage level 3. And that's a healing spell, if that wasn't obvious. Apparently if we have something called a Flatus Solus, it'll grant stone skin. Dia. Uh, keep using Dia though. Our enfeebling magic skill is very important to raise. Uh, it's a very instrumental type of skill. Uh, a pound of prevention is worth a. or er, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, or whatever the saying is. A pound of prevention is worth 10 pounds of cure, or something like that. I wonder which one's the greater analogy. A pound is like 16 ounces, right? Alright. Now we're level 4. So now we can learn stone. It's our first black magic. Uh, black mage can learn it at level 1 and comes with it as, as their first spell. 
Dia's defense down does not lower magic defense. So Stone's not going to see any big returns. But, uh, you know, we can mix we can mix spells and sword play now. You see, the stone has a really low recast time, so it's very good for skilling up your elemental magic skill. Elemental magic skill applies to all of the offensive elemental magic, obviously. And, um... Ooh, an ether. Like, see, we can, like, we can do it like a Dia, and then... I feel like they lowered the MP cost on stone. But I might be remembering wrong. Then we can hit him with a fast blade. Yeah. And if we had anyone to make skill chains with, uh, we could. Uh, we could magic burst our own skill chains on, on Red Mage. But we don't have anyone to make skill chains with without using trusts. Which, honestly, I should be using trusts to level, and I will. Uh, it's just, since trusts will kill things faster, I'll get less skill ups. So like, what kind of happens nowadays with leveling, since you level so fast, your skill ups are still slow, and so like there's these like special foods that increase the rate you get skill ups at, there's uh, special like earrings and things you can get that will increase the rate at which you get skill ups. Uh, you can actually get to level 99 faster than you can actually cap your skills. And so it's really common to get to level 99 on job and not have your skills. And so, like, you have to just sort of take things in stride anyway. But the way I'm going to be leveling things... Um, I'm not gonna. I'm still gonna be behind on skills, but I'm gonna be much closer to like. I'm gonna be growing like slowly, basically. So I'm gonna be leveling everything, and uh, it sounds daunting because it is, but uh, it could be worse. So we hit him with a deal. We lowered his defense. He blinded us. But his blind wasn't enough. And his blind doesn't affect our magic accuracy, just our physical. So we have multiple avenues of attack. You also might be wondering, like, are elemental weaknesses and resistances a thing in Final Fantasy XI? And the answer is yes. Uh, like, this Stone Eater is clearly an Earth Elemental monster, so it's going to have a fairly good resistance against stone. But, on the other hand, that makes it kind of good for skilling up, because, you know, we can cast stone on it more often, or more times, or whatever. Skilling up is, like, a lot different than EXPing. It's basically just, um spamming the spell of the type of magic that you want to skill up over and over again. Uh, skilling up is a very tedious affair. And on my main character, I actually love skilling up. It's my favorite thing to do. <laughs> I guess that tells you something about me, huh? And uh, it actually made me develop quite a lot of patience. Because it took quite a while. Or uh, Skilling up was more difficult in the past. Uh, they didn't have all the foods, they didn't have uh, extra methods, like all the methods for skilling up hadn't really been found. Um, it was just like one of those things, you know, so. Yeah. I don't think they lowered the cost on Dia at all, because it's actually a good spell. And you get... Dia 2 later, and Red Mage can actually merit Dia 3. White Mage can also cast Dia, but like it gets it at a higher level than, than Red Mage. Yeah, see, we're, we're quite easily, quite handily 
out leveling our capacity to skill up our magic and our sword skill. So like the more the more abilities your job has, the longer it's gonna take you to skill it up and actually make it effective. Goblin Thug. Since we have our case, there's really no reason for us to drop things. So let's just like throw, I don't know, the ram skin and the ram horns in there. Because those aren't going to be something we find much of. You want to see the Cure 1 spell? Oh, oh no! Casting can be interrupted by physical attacks! Oh. So there's a healing magic skill that affects the potency of your cures. Uh, you know, there's... there's uh, We also look, since we're level 6 now, look, we're level 3 monk as our, our sub job. Our stats are fairly balanced. Uh, not perfect or anything. But yeah, the skilling up thing, uh, since jobs share skills, like for instance, Red Mage shares healing magic and divine magic and enfeebling magic, all with White Mage. And then. They have different proficiencies in each, right? But if you leveled White Mage and Red Mage, you get two opportunities to skill, skill the skills up. So leveling multiple jobs can really help keep the skills on track. And that's what I am going to do. I, I keep saying I'm going to do it, and I am going to do it. I just, I'm slow, and I want to record, and I want to blab. I apparently really like the sound of my own voice. I'm an Elcor. Also, they totally raised the ability to earn parrying skill. Uh, and I'm wondering if they changed how parry works. Because you used to get a pretty... Um, pretty prominent animation when you actually parry an attack. And parrying an attack, you get a log message that said, uh, you know, Calm Wind parries the Goblin Fisher's attack, or whatever. And, uh... That would... Um, you, like, you would take no damage when you parried an attack. But see, we're getting parrying skills, and I'm not seeing any parries go off. There it is! There it is! We actually parried it in back. I guess they made it work more like evasion, where you don't actually have to dodge an attack for your evasion to go up. Uh, you just There's a chance to get a skill up every time there's a, a the check roll. Because what happens when you get attacked is you get a parry roll, you get an evasion roll, uh, you get a damage roll, and... Uh, If the parry roll succeeds, you actually parry the attack. You also, if you got a shield on, you get a shield roll. If you're using hand to hand and you have guarding skill, you get a guard check roll. And there's all these rolls that are happening behind the scenes. And we hit level 7. And you know what that means? We get to equip finally the bounding boots we got yesterday. Oh, yeah. They're actually not unique at all. Uh, there's a level 17 or level 15 set, the Lizard Jerkin set, that you can make out of Lizard Hide with Leathercraft. And they look exactly like Lizard Liddelsons. Um, 
But, uh, yeah, like, they're just... They're really good, so... Yeah, that'll help our accuracy out. Although, now that we've got those, I want to go talk to the Festive Moogle. Um, which I think is in Port Bastok near the Moogle House to get that beret and that Chocobo shirt because those have some effects on them that we're going to want um, and that are going to help me grind in between episodes like I keep saying I'm going to. And I really do mean that I'm going to. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to level all the jobs up uh, to probably to up, up to, to up to Monk's level, possibly up to like level 25. Um, and then we'll continue on on whichever one I feel like being for the story. And I might go ahead and make clips of, uh, if like I find Notorious Monsters, I'll make clips and I'll add them to the playlist for the Let's Play. Um, I'll just title, title them like, Let's Play Final Fantasy XI and then the Notorious Monsters name or something like that. Because, like, I don't want to make an episode every single time I run into a notorious monster and then feel like I have to be compelled to, like, uh, you know, play for, like, uh, you know, an hour while talking to you and showing you basically diddly squat in regards to, like, story and all that. Um, also, I think we're gonna... let's see... I have no idea what most of this stuff does. I'm just looking for for names. Names. Yeah, I'll find it later. I want I want to turn my names off. I th wait. Maybe it's a text command I gotta put in? Because so some things are text commands. And you can actually... You can actually do stuff like... Um, you can make macros for your spells and things. And you can also type them out. Like, you can do slash ma... Uh, cure... I think that's how it works. Me? Yeah. Like, th that would be like what you put in the macro line. And you can you can do that. Uh, you can also I think you can also do it like uh, let's see slash ma cure t and whoever you're targeting well yeah let's see uh, if I want to I can just cure zero HP and raise my healing magic skill that way. Um, I'm not sure if there's like a limitation on that or anything, but uh, it's a thing you can do. And let to, for convenience's sake, because this episode's already longer than I want it to be, um, we want the one that's near the entrance, because that's the one closest to the festive mogul. Because I believe the festive mogul. We talked to him last time, right? And he said, "Come back when you when you like you got something I care about, dude." Um, But that's where we can get our beret. I had to look that up. I figured they would have just made it, made the, um, Moogle House Association or the Adventure Mutual Aid Network or whatever, uh, send it to us in our delivery box, but that is not the case. So, yeah. Also, the reason we don't want to equip this shell shield is because it has agility minus two. Um, that other shield we've got that I think is level 8, that's in our MOG case. Let's see, where is it? I thought it was in the MOG case. Oh, okay, no, the Maple Shield, yeah, it's got the same defense, and it's only one level higher. So we're going to be using the Maple Shield. There's the festive Moogle. Hey, you got anything that, uh... Yeah, give me that. Let's 
see, enchantment costume, lightning effect 30 and below, adds regen and refresh effects, auto re-raise, increases skill gain rate, increases movement speed. Okay. Is that all in the enchantment, or is it just from putting it on? Because it's got seven defense either way. It makes us look pretty goofy. But, uh, aren't you supposed to have a chocobo tunic for me, too? Yeah, okay, I guess he can only give me one one item at a time, and my inventory sucks. Oh, we could also learn the Protect spell now. Protect is one of my favorite spells. Uh, it's enhancing magic. And, um... Red Mage has like a B plus in that. It just gives you a raw defense increase based on whatever your enhancing magic skill is. Let's see, Chocobo shirt. What does the Chocobo shirt have? Latent effect. Under level 31. Accuracy plus 50. Ranged accuracy plus 50. Magic accuracy plus 50. Ability to appreciate Geisel Greens. Initiate and below. Likelihood of losing synthesis material loss. Minus 1%. Dispenses crystals. Uh, okay. Uh, so... How does this work? I think our movement speed is increased. What does the enchantment do? Uh, oh! What, what? It turns us into an egg? Okay, how do I, how do I get out of the egg? What? <laughs> That's so silly. How do I how do I get out of the egg though? How to how to like what? How how do I how do I get out of this crazy thing? No one's paying attention to that slash play, or they haven't filtered. Uh, maybe slash costume? Slash costume off? Slash off? Maybe if I unequip the thing? Nope! Maybe if I unequip the hat. Nope. What? <laughs> what the fuck? Um. Do I just? How do I? Oh, I'm gonna have to look this up. I can't. <laughs> I can't. I can't. So I got FX. Uh, I got Final Fantasy XI. I got this newfangled thing. Uh, it says I can turn into an egg. Now I'm stuck in this egg and I don't know how to hatch. Just cancel the egg buff. You can toggle your status effects and remove the egg effect manually, like canceling any status effect. Status buff. And you, you hatch as a chocobo. The longer you stay an egg, the faster you can move when you leave the egg. Button that expands your chat log switches to examining status effects if you press it once more. Uh... Huh. Whoa! I'm a... I'm a Chocobo! <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> that's kind of funny. That's kind of funny. That, like, that's actually... Like, being a Chocobo... They... Like, they need to tell people this. You can, you can be a fucking Chocobo. <laughs> what the 
heck, man? I wonder if it'll stay on if I go outside. Also, apparently, the longer you stay as an egg, the faster you'll move. So, like, if you stayed as the egg for, like, the whole hour or something, I guess when you hatched, you'd be, like, super fast or something. This is kind of funny. Like, he's so cute. My friend has an egg, or my friend has a chocobo. Well, I hadn't planned for this to go for an hour and a half, but I guess we're going for an hour and a half. Uh, and I guess I might as well show you... Um, some of Northern Gustaberg. I mean, it's not that much different from Southern, but... Uh, like, the monster distribution is different. It's actually a little less risky up here for a little while longer, because you don't have straight access to the hill, and it's a, it's a smaller... Um, it's like a larger zone, but it's a smaller in smaller sections, I guess. And there's also you see where Drakenfall is on the map. Uh, you can't actually go into the western half from this side unless they change something. But uh, yeah. This is so, so funny. Let's see if I can turn names off. Names. Yeah, there you go. I'm gonna have to look up the text commands for this game. I've forgotten most of them. <laughs> Check out a decent challenge. Yeah, this is a good place to stop being a chocobo and end it. I guess. Or we could run over to the top of the Drakenfall. That that would probably that would that would round us out at a nice even hour and a half, I suppose. You can see the top of the waterfall. Cause why not? This is kind of double funny, because, like, before I can ride a chocobo, I can be one. <laughs> like, there is definitely a year, or some some breakpoint year, where the staff at Square Enix was just sort of, that, like, is tasked with handling this game, was just sort of like, yeah, you know what, fuck it. Only the hardcore people are playing now. Only the people who love this game are playing. Just give them whatever makes the game fun. Make it fun for them. And I have no problem with that. It's just sort of funny. I'd say we're in for a nice view, but... Uh, oh, I think I need to like go into my registry and increase my draw distance. Because, like, I mean, there's only sheer cliffs where everything turns white but uh, my draw distance only goes so far. I kind of wish it didn't go that far. I kind of wish it stopped, like, past the bridge and there was, like, some fog or something. I don't know. Anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time. I'm going to level up now and uh, in this stupid outfit, and, uh, yeah. So, have a good one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again.